if you want to torture him, would be a shot to the shoulder, to the hands, to the knee, and meticulously kill him slowly. I'm John Elite, uh, known in my neighborhood actually as Johnny A. Light in the past. I was raised around the mafia. I grew up around the Ruggiano family, Murder Inc. I started off as a kid running errands for George Gaddy and his brother that were Lucchese soldiers. And slowly I worked my way up as an enforcer and a hitman for the Gaddy regime. I was around some really nice guys, but really famous mafia guys as a kid. When these guys were being raised and then when I was raised to be a very quiet society. Over the years, some of that stuff changed. Later on, it was around Lucky Luciano's cousin Charlie that was my father and uncle's partner in nightclubs, card games and I looked up to them like people look up to uh, movie stars or ball players. I mean at about three four years old I was already in a boxing ring when my dad was a fighter in the Navy uh, his friends were all boxers. I think that's part of our neighborhood you know because of the area we grew up in it was all gangsters and everybody's into sports and boxing is one of the top sports everybody's into so as a young kid we got accustomed to being fighters being tough, used to blood, used to being hurt, and it, and it just elevated me into that life. And so I didn't have any qualms with watching somebody get hurt or somebody bleed, or even I've seen people obviously at young ages that were killed or baseball batted. And by the time I'm 16, George Gaddy asks me, can I collect some money for him? I go to baseball bat somebody for him as a, as a young kid. That was my first experience of really hurting somebody that way. You know, as I kept moving forward, I became more and more aggressive. So as I was running through the neighborhood and I started bookmaking, selling drugs, loaning money, hijacking. Uh, I started doing everything there was to do on, a, on the street, the whole gamut of crimes. And you'll hear people say, oh, he's fearless. It was just a way of life. I don't think I was any different than a lot of kids that grew up with me in my neighborhood. We also got baseball batted. We also got stabbed. We also got shot. And again, we took that in stride of the way we grew up. So as I was growing up, I was losing friends. They were getting killed. We compare it all the time, I guess, street guys do to the, being at war. That you get expecting to lose friends and you're just going to take it in stride. And I think as I just kept getting older and moving forward in the life, I wanted to make money. I wanted to make a mark for myself. I wanted to continue to have that name as the enforcer but also have that name being level-headed and the reputation of being a gentleman and a nice guy. And it's a hard mix to do. During some of those trials, tribulations, I'm also going to prison. You're going to prison for assaults, you're coming home. You're going to prison for carrying guns, you're coming home. And then you're going to prison for uh, more serious crimes, attempted murders, murders, drug dealing. And at one point when I got hit with several RICO charges, I went on the run. And I think that's really, that was the final straw of my life in the mob where I went on the run and people, and I really understood that the uh, loyalty in this life went from me believing truly in it. And I just really, it was a pill that I just finally learned I need to swallow that this life isn't what I thought it was and when I came home I changed my life and I became an advocate for the youth communities so I'm able to give kids the insight and future of what their lives would be like if they continue on the path that I used to be on I've heard of these games but I don't know uh, about mafia itself uh, the, the video game I think the video clip you're about to show me, I think I'm going to be over the top, crazy, wild. <laughs> Don't kill me! Please! I got a wife! You should have thought about your wife before. It reminds me of the old days, 50s or 60s kind of thing. Don Clemente sends his regards. I mean, I would never say anything like that. Oh! <laughs> Sometimes guys sneak up on another guy who thinks he's in control with a pistol. That's kind of realistic. That could happen. Nah, those are just uh, ridiculous lines in the in the media and TV shows. Actually, the setup ain't bad itself, except for the Tommy gun, unless you're trying to predict the picket back in the day. Uh, I mean, otherwise, it's kind of pretty realistic. Hey, O'Neal. I got a little business to settle with you. The uh, words that are used are kind of stupid. I'm not gonna be so gentle this time. The fighting skills are terrible. If he's gonna come stab him in prison, it's not gonna be like that. He's gonna wait till he's walking out the door or uh, when he's got his back turned or he's gonna come in and sneak him. That's prison. There's no rules there. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> up. Completely ridiculous. Everything about it's ridiculous. So the only part that was realistic, I was gonna say, is when he's doing the uh, curls with the dumbbells. After that, nothing's realistic. This is for Marty.
again, these are Tommy Gunn things back in the 50s, it looks like. And, you know, when he jumps in the car, he goes, let's go to my place. That's kind of realistic. Everything else besides that, the way they do it to some of the language is, is kind of over the top. But again, it's I know it's only a game. Henry's different these days. The guy's got a real... What, what the, the f*** is going on? That's Henry. What the f*** are they hitting him with? The language he used about what are they hitting him with, it's something somebody would say, and they start running towards him, it's too late, they already clipped him. Actually, that happens all the time, so that, that really wasn't a bad scene either. When guys are just talking, walking, they're going to meet somebody, and they walk upon their friend being beat to death and then shot. So to me, it would look like a guy that did something, obviously owed somebody something, tried to hit somebody, they caught him short, what we call. That's something also that would have happened back in my day. Yeah, that was, well, nonsense. Both the, the words were terrible. Everything they said was just completely killed the first scene prior to that. What is it that you want? <laughs> what the f*** do you think we want? We want to know why you had our friend killed. We also want the money you took from him. I had no choice. Your friend was a government informer. What the what? F are you talking about? Are you saying Henry was a rat? Yes. The conversation, it wouldn't be there. The conversation would have went from one organization to another that the guys in the form that we got, and they would have a sit down over it prior to all that. It wouldn't end up like that. So where's our money? It's not here anymore. What? Where the hell is it then? I cannot tell you. If I told you, I'd be dead anyway. Find your choice. The point is to get the money. You wouldn't be shooting them in the head until you have the, the money. Well, first off, all the talking and, you know, pointing the guns. They always got to point the guns at everybody. That part is, is silly. I mean, just the whole thing is just way off of what really would, would occur. If really they wanted revenge, you wouldn't be all that talking. They would have grabbed them. They would have tied them up. They would have, you know, beat them a little bit maybe and killed them. Either tortured him, killed him, but without the words, without the language, if you want to torture him, it would be a shot to the shoulder, to the hands, to the knee, and meticulously kill him slowly. It would just want to happen that way. Mr. Angelo. Uh, yes? Mr. Salieri sends his regards. Rolling up on him while he's doing something on a garden and, and hitting him is pretty realistic. When he turns around and he says yes, I don't think he would say yes because he knows what's coming. Uh, the scene itself, when they roll up on the car, right? if they would have just got out and, and shot the shit out of him and then got and shot him in the head after he goes down, then I'd say go back in the car, that's realistic. But, you know, sending the re regards and all that's just being dramatic. You know something, Carlo? For the last 10 years, all I've done was kill. I killed for my country. I killed for my family. I killed anybody that got in my way. Shooting them a couple of times like that, all different places, to make them feel the pain before he just kills them quickly is, is pretty true. <laughs> Prick. If he's really mad at somebody like that, I think he would say a couple of things. Not not those words, though. Overall, it needs a lot of work. They better hire me, and they need somebody that understands that stuff and, and is able to redesign that to make it more realistic, if that's what they're looking to do. When you're watching these video games, the first thing I always think about, what I always talk about as being a street guy and gangster, is the adrenaline rush. So these kids get the same idea of an adrenaline rush through these games, but they don't see the realistic part of the consequences of a game compared to life, which is an issue. So now I, I'm in touch with several agencies, several police departments in different cities and states, uh, also with parent groups that contact me to deal with some of the kids that they can't reach. Somebody got in touch with me yesterday by listening to me and hearing me talk, it opened his eyes to see that there's something else he can do for himself besides stay on the street and it change his life. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of Professionals Play. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe because we got plenty more content. Check it out.